Okay, for this part, for the chapter three material, I did make some changes because I wanted you to kind of be prepared for anything that was gonna come up on the test. So I did add some extra pieces there. So I put them here as like parts, okay? And the first part is really what they're asking for number 18. And um, what, what I have here for part C is really what they're asking for number 19, okay? Um, but I'm gonna do all five pieces just so that you can see um, the way this works. Okay, so for the first one, it's asking me to find the vertex and it's already in this form where you have a x minus h squared plus k. And so in this kind of form, your vertex is always going to be um, h comma k. So notice here it's the opposite sign and here it's the same sign. Okay. Um, and then your axis of your axis is always going to be an equation x equals this h value. Okay. So if it's in this form, it's rather easy to pick out the vertex and the axis. Um, so number 18, they're asking us to find the vertex. Well, you would just take the opposite sign of minus two, which is plus two, and then the exact same sign of what's outside the square, which is negative three. And that is the vertex, which answers the question for number 18. For number 19, it's also in this form, and they're asking me for the axes of symmetry. Well, all I need to know is that h here is the opposite, which is positive three, and so my axes is gonna be x equals to that h value, which is three. So those are nice if they're in that form. Now, if you do have these problems on the final, they may be in this nice form, or they may not be. And so what I've done is I've multiplied this out and I got this, this uh, quadratic equation, and I multiplied this all out and I got this quadratic equation. So the answer should be the same, but I wanna show you how to find the vertex and the axis of symmetry if you are not given it in this particular form. So we do remember that when you're trying to find the vertex, we do know that it's h comma k, but h can be found by doing negative b over 2a. And the b and the a can only be found if the quadratic formula is expanded out like this and not in this form, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate that value. So negative b over two times an a, I get four over two, which is two. And so that's going to be the x coordinate, h is equal to two. If I wanna find k, all I have to do is plug two into the quadratic equation. When I do that, I get four minus eight, which is negative four plus one, which is negative three. And now I have the y value for that vertex. So again, these are the same equation, just in different forms. So I should end up with the same exact answer. Um, number 19, the same thing. If they're asking me for the axes of symmetry, this is what I want, x equal to h. That's the answer. The only thing is, is I don't know what the h value is. So if I wanna calculate what the h value is, I gotta do the negative b over 2a. So in this case, it would be negative 12 times two over, or two times negative two. So I get negative 12 over negative four, which is positive three. So what is the equation for the axes? It's x equals that value. And sure enough, I get the exact same thing as I had before, because again, these are the same functions, just in different forms, okay? Um, e says solve for f of x equal to zero using the square root property. And so I'm going to do that for both of these functions here. So I'm going to take this function and equal it to zero, and I'm going to take this function and equal it to zero. Okay, so you have two examples, basically one where there's a number outside the parentheses and one where there's not, okay? And so if I'm gonna solve it using the square root property, I first have to get the squared term by itself, okay? And then I can take the square root on both sides, but when I do that, the power will go away, but I get plus or minus the square root of three. <coughs> Excuse me, and there is no square root of three, so I'm just gonna add two on both sides. And since this is in a house and that's out of a house, you can't put them together, so put the positive two in front. 
And this is the solution. Now, <coughs> excuse me, over here, I still have to do the same thing. I have to get the squared term by itself. So I'm gonna minus five on both sides. I get this, but the squared term is still not by itself. So I have to divide by that coefficient. So a negative and a negative, I get positive five halves. Then I can take the square root of both. So it'll go away on this side. Oops, I don't need the parentheses anymore then. So it'll go away on this side. And on this side, I get plus or minus. And I'm going to write it like this. Now, if I write it like that in my calculator, square root of 5 over, oops, let's do fractions. Square root of 5 over square root of 2. It tells me that this is actually square root of 10 over 2. And then now, if I want to keep solving for x, I have to add 3 to both sides. So I get x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 10 over 2. Now, if you look in the choices, they won't look like this. They'll always be one giant fraction. But if I take this, which is 3 over 1, and I multiply it by this common denominator, you actually end up with x equals 6 plus or minus square root of 10. And since both of them are over 2, that's when you can write it as one giant fraction over 2. And that is what your solutions will look like in the choices. Okay. So I just wanted to give you those extra examples, but we'll go ahead and continue on with number 20. So number 20 is actually asking you for the correct end behavior. And these I can actually do here on the sheet. I'll just write them over here so you have everything together. So when you're asking you for end behavior, you definitely need to have all the different types of the end behavior with a little bit of an explanation. And then you can do these two problems, no, no big deal. So if you have a positive coefficient and an even exponent, then it should be going up on both sides. If you have a negative coefficient, but an even exponent, it would be going down on both sides. Then if you have a positive, but an odd exponent, it would go down on the left and up on the right. And if it was a negative coefficient with an odd exponent, it does the opposite, up on the left and down on the right. And so how do you know which term to look at? You always have to look at the term with the highest exponent. So this is the term I should be looking at for number 20. And this is the term that I should be looking at for number 21. Now, sometimes they're not in order, so make sure that you're hunting for the term that has the highest exponent. Now, here I have a negative and I have an odd, which means it should be doing this on the left and that on the right. And that's the answer. For 21, this is a positive number, and that's an even. And when it's positive and even, it should be going up on both ends. And that is the correct end behavior. Now for number 22, it says, find a polynomial of degree three with real coefficients that satisfies the given conditions. So it has the zeros, negative three, negative one, and four. Well, if the zeros are negative three, negative one, and four, the factors are going to be x plus three, x plus one, and x minus four. But in order for me to get the function, I have to know what the coefficient in the front should be. And so that's where this extra point comes in. So in that, it looks like they're using p instead of f. So the p of 2, this is the x, and then this is the y. So this is my y. That's going to become 5. And all the x's are going to become 2. And so I get a 5, 3, negative 2. When I multiply all that together, I get negative 30. And if I want to solve for a, I'm going to divide by negative 30. And so then I get a equals negative 1, 6. So what does the polynomial actually look like? It's negative 1, 6, x plus 3, x plus 1, and x minus 4. 
Now number 23 is the same exact thing. It's just they gave it to me in a graph, okay? So I do have this x-intercept. So I will have negative three, it'll be x plus three. And then here it'll be x minus one. And here it'll be x minus four. And because it went through that, through that, and through that, each one of them will have a multiplicity of one. And so I'm gonna use this extra point here that wasn't an intercept to figure out what a is. So the y value is four and the x value is zero. And so then I get a times three times negative one times negative four, which is a times 12. If I divide both sides by 12, I get one third equals a. So what is the polynomial? It's one third x plus three x minus one x minus four. Okay, number 24 is very similar. Um, the only thing different here is you only have two intercepts. So you have this one, so it'll be x actually plus two, and then here it'll be x minus three. This one goes through, so the multiplicity is one, but this one bounces, which means the multiplicity should be two. And then use the other point that wasn't an x-intercept to find a. So the y value here is six, and all the x values should be zero. Now we don't need to write the one exponent, but you must write the two exponent, because that is gonna change things. So here I have two and negative three squared, which means I have two times a positive nine, which means I have a times 18. And if I divide both sides by 18, I get one third equals a. So what is the polynomial here? It is one third times x plus two times x minus three squared. So you have to remember when it crosses the x-intercept, the exponent should be one. And when it bounces, the exponent should be two. And if it happens to wiggle through there, looking like this, or looking like this, right? If it wiggles through there, then the exponent is three, okay? So you've gotta remember those bits of information. Now, number 25, I'm asking you for both the vertical asymptotes and the horizontal asymptotes, because these are different kinds of cases, um, and I want you to make sure that you have practice with both of those cases, so no matter which one you get on the final, you'll be prepared for it, okay? So for number 25 and number 26, I actually want us to find both the vertical and the horizontal uh, asymptotes for both of those problems. So for number 25, um, they ask me for the vertical asymptote. So in the back, we, vertical asymptotes, you have to set your denominator equal to zero. And that you should have on your note sheet, right? So if I take x squared minus 36 equal to zero, I can add 36 over and then I can take the square root, but I get plus or minus six, okay? So I have two vertical asymptotes. I have x equal to six and I have x equal to negative six. Those are my vertical asymptotes. Now, this is extra. It's not gonna be in the back because this is something that I'm adding. But for the horizontal asymptotes, you have to talk about the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. The degree of the numerator, highest exponent is one. The degree of the denominator, highest exponent is two. When the top exponent is smaller than the bottom exponent, you automatically have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And so you need to know that, that if your degree of your numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, it's automatically gonna be at y equals zero. You must put that on your note sheet, okay? For number 26, I have f of x equals x plus two. Um, oh, no, I have x squared plus two over x squared minus two. So in this case, um, they're asking me for the horizontal asymptote. So I have to consider the degrees, right? The degree of the numerator and then the degree of the denominator. 
So the degree of the numerator, highest exponent is two. The degree of the denominator, highest exponent is two. Here they are equivalent to each other. And when they're equivalent to each other, your horizontal asymptote is actually gonna be at y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator and the leading coefficient over the leading coefficient of the denominator. So in my case, the leading coefficient of the numerator is one and the leading coefficient of the denominator is also one. So for us, one over one is just one. That's going to be the horizontal asymptote. Now, I also want us to do the vertical asymptote just to have practice. So if I set my denominator equal to zero, um, I would have to add two over. And then if I took the square root on both sides, I would get x equals plus or minus the square root. So we have two vertical asymptotes and these guys would be it, okay? Just to get extra practice with those. Now, numbers 27, they want us to sketch the graph here. So in order for us to do the graph, we definitely need to have those asymptotes and then pick some extra points, right? So we want asymptotes, intercepts, and then extra points if necessary. So first thing I'm gonna do is for the vertical asymptote, take that denominator and equal it to zero. I get x equals negative five. So when I draw here, I have one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to have this asymptote there. Okay, for the horizontal asymptote, the degree of the numerator is one, the degree of the denominator is also one, one here and a one there. They're equal, so then the horizontal asymptote is at y equals this coefficient, which is one, over this coefficient, which is one, which simplifies to just one. So I'm gonna have a horizontal asymptote at the y value of one. Now, I need to find my x-intercepts, and that you get by taking the numerator equal to zero. So x minus four equal to zero, I get x equals four. So one, two, three, four, here we go. Now the y-intercept you get by plugging in zero. So zero minus four, zero plus five, negative four over five, which is negative 0.8. So one, two, three, four, five, negative 0 0.8 is about right there. Now I um, have two points to the right here, so I kind of already know that this has to trail off to that, and then somehow I've got to get over here. It's pretty steep, but I'm trying my best. It's gonna eventually curve down this way because you can't cross up there, you can't cross this y-axis, okay? So, Plus, I don't have any more x-intercepts, so I definitely can't cross up there. I shouldn't be crossing, because I only have this one x-intercept. But I don't know what's happening over here. And if there happens to be two choices on there, one where this side is going down and this side is going down, and then another choice where this side is going down, but this one's going up, I have to know which one is which, right? Which one's gonna be mine? So what you have to do is just plug in another point over here, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe negative seven. So if I plug in negative seven, I get negative 11 over negative two, which is 5.5. So I get this point, negative seven and 5.5, which is up here. And so then that tells me that this is gonna be going upward and then that one has to go there. It's not at the bottom, it's at the top, okay? And then now I'd be able to select the correct graph in, on my exam. So number 28 is the same thing, we're gonna be graphing it, but it's a different function. So vertical asymptote, we're gonna take our denominator equal to zero take the square root, we get plus or minus three. So here we have one, two, three, and we have a vertical asymptote, one, two, three, and we have another vertical asymptote. Then we're gonna do the horizontal asymptote. So the degree of the numerator is one, the degree of the denominator is two, it's less, so it's automatically at y equals zero, which basically means I have the horizontal asymptote on top of the x-axis. Now I'm gonna do the x-intercepts that you get by taking the numerator equal to zero. So I get negative two. 
So right here, if I do the y-intercept, that's going to be if I plug in 0. So I get 2 over negative 9, which is negative 0 0.222. So that's about right here, really, really close. Um, what I don't know is, well, it can't go back up because I don't have any other x-intercepts. So even though this one's gonna go like that, I don't have any choice but to go downward. What I don't know is whether the pieces over here are up or down or one and one and then one and one, right? I don't know. So we're definitely gonna have to come up with some more values. So let's pick one over here, negative three, let's do negative five, positive three, so let's do five. So if I plug in negative five in there, um, let's see what we get. So fraction negative five plus two over negative five squared minus nine, um, that is negative 0 0.1875. So it would be, negative, so it'd be down here. So then that makes sense, it would be like this. And now if I plug in five, it'd be five plus two over five squared minus nine, I get positive 0.4375. So that would be over here, and then it'd be right here. So it's gotta trail that way, and then it's gotta go up, because there's no x-intercepts over here. And so now I know what the graph of that one would look like. Okay, and I'd be able to choose the graph that has the correct um, asymptotes and then has the correct behavior in all the different sections. Um, last problem, I believe, in this chapter is 29. So now they give us the graph and they want us to come up with the equation. So remember, your numerator is going to give you the x-intercepts and your denominator is where you're gonna get the vertical asymptotes. And then if you have a number in front, that'll come from the extra, from the y-intercept, okay? Um, actually, that doesn't come from the y-intercept, that comes from the horizontal asymptote. And then you just use the y-intercept to check. Okay, so let's put this information together. I'm gonna have f of x equals a, parentheses, and I have one x-intercept at negative one, so that's x plus one. It does go through there, so it should have a power one. And that's the only x-intercept I have. Um, my vertical asymptotes, I have two. I have one at negative five, so x plus five. And then I have one at zero, x minus zero. Now, I do have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. When it's at y equals zero, it means the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. And here that makes sense because I've got one factor with x at the numerator, but two factors of x at the bottom. So the highest exponent here would be one, and the highest exponent down there is gonna eventually be a square. So I already fit this criteria. Um, and so then now let's clean this up. So it's gonna be f of x equals a, x plus one, and then x minus zero is just x, and we usually write that guy in the front. Now the only thing left to do is to figure out what to do with the y-intercept. So it's the y-intercept is actually here at zero and negative one. So that means when I plug in zero for x, oh, actually I don't have a y-intercept because notice how it goes down forever. This is a vertical asymptote. So you actually don't have this thing here. And if they don't give you any other information, then you really can't figure out A. But I'm pretty sure there's another point on this graph that I can use besides the y-intercept. So for instance, um, no, I'm not really seeing anything that's gonna stand out. In that case, the probably the choices don't have a coefficient and they're just gonna have x plus one over x times x plus five. You will have a coefficient there though if your horizontal asymptote was not zero. So keep that in mind in case the horizontal asymptote is not at zero. That will, whatever that value is, that'll be the number that goes here if it weren't zero, okay? 
Um, so I'm going to stop the video here. That's enough for this chapter. And then we're going to hit into the last chapter, which is chapter four in the next video.